turn it on. So hopefully everyone can see me as well. Ready to get started, Allison? Yes, yeah, let's get going. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder for anybody who's who's on the call, please uh, mute yourself uh, just to start. And if you want to speak, um, uh, you can either raise your hand or unmute yourself at, at, at various points in time of the meeting um, uh, to ask any questions. We're going to go through a, a short presentation um, highlighting some of the, the various aspects of, of the league, and then we'll we'll um, we'll have questions at the end. Uh, so every, everyone, uh, good evening and, and welcome to, the, to our new team administrator meeting. Um, uh, thank you for joining us. With, with me is Allison Smith, who's our league administrator um, as well, uh, to help with the presentation and answer any questions. Uh, this session is part of a regular preseason presentation that we do before the fall and the spring season, um, aimed at new teams and new and administrators to help um, give an understanding of the league, how we operate, how we like to communicate, um, and allow you to be effective in, in, in running your teams and answer any questions that you, know, you might have, anticipate any questions you might have or, or, or challenge you might face when you're uh, running your teams throughout the, throughout the season. Um, objectives today, briefly introduce how the NCSL works, uh, how we communicate, and then your responsibilities with the, as, a, as a team manager, as a club rep, and how we like to work with, with the league in various aspects. Um, breaking down the agenda there, same thing. So we'll also talk about the referees and rules at the end and some laws and procedures that we want you to keep, it, keep in mind. Um, so let's just do a brief introduction of, of NCSL. Um, NCSL is the largest youth soccer organization in the DMV area with 60 clubs across DC, Virginia, Maryland, and West Virginia. Yes, even West Virginia. Um, we have nearly 1,300 teams, uh, making us one of the largest teams, uh, largest our leagues in the United States. Um, our league is run by executive committee, administrators, and board of directors. Um, that includes representatives from each club. So each the executive committee and the administrators meet monthly um, to discuss updates, rules changes, and other league matters. Um, and the meetings, ensure, the meetings ensure that the league runs smoothly and addresses any issues uh, promptly. Um, each club has a representative, a club rep, which we will discuss their role that sits as, on, as a board of directors. Um, and the board approves any major changes in the league, which such as rule modifications and missions of, of new clubs. Um, your club rep is your point of contact. If you're not a club rep, you're a team manager. Your club rep is the point of contact for, for the league, and they're crucial in running and how we, we manage the teams uh, throughout the league. Uh, they represent the, the, the club's decision-making process, voting matters, things like that, um, and bring forth issues and suggestions from, from their clubs uh, and communicate you know, important information back to the team. So it's kind of a two-way street, um, and they are important in terms of, of the way that we run our, run our leagues. Um, the league is essentially run by the by the clubs and the, and the executive committee and myself and, and, and Allison and, and the administrators are the ones facilitating operations. Um, this is the overall youth structure and where we fit in within the, the larger landscape, um, the broader landscape, the framework, which which is U.S. youth soccer, just so you get a, an idea of how where we sit in the, in the pyramid. Um, we're all underneath the U.S. soccer um, umbrella. And we specifically fall, fall under U.S. youth soccer, which is important to, to designate because there's also U.S. club soccer, which is the governing body for things like ECNL, EDP, and some other leagues that are watching well, EDP. I think now it's U.S. youth soccer, but um, that have other leagues that that we are not necessarily the same part of the same system. Um, underneath U.S. youth soccer is the state associations, so Virginia youth soccer, Maryland, West Virginia. Um, we are specifically under that U.S. Youth Soccer governing body, and within those state associations, we operate just below that. Um, and that distinction is, is crucial. Understanding player eligibility for our league when it comes to club passing and things like that, which we'll discuss later. Um, within obviously NCSL are now team administrators, which is yourself, the coaches, parents, players, club reps, things like that, to help facilitate the, the league. So the key information for the team administrators, um, the the as a team administrator, your primary role is to manage your team's operations and ensure compliance with league rules. 
Um, this includes maintaining your with through your through your club rep, maintaining the the NCSL uh, page that your team page, uh, managing your schedules, and communicating with your parents and players, and ensuring all necessary as necessary documentation is in order. So you just need to you're doing you're the one responsible for managing your team and making sure they're 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 eligible to play each game. Um, and then the communication with your club rep is 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 vital in terms of any changes or any updates or um, anything that might we need to know about. That will usually usually you'll need to communicate with them and oops, sorry, to communicate with them in order to um, make changes. I'm showing a picture here of the NCSL website, which you can visit um, at, at, during this in, it, during this presentation. That is the central hub for all league related information. Um, you'll hear you'll find here the schedules underneath the travel section. You'll see the link to the travel and a menu will drop down. You'll see all of the schedules, the contact information for the teams. Um, or for, sorry, the, the schedules, the division placements, the league rules, and any important updates. Within this website in the banner on the top, you'll also see the clubs section, the, the link for the clubs. That has all of the team information. So each club is organized. Um, and I'll show you quickly what that might look like. Oops. This is the club listing page. And you'll see that some clubs are listed as rec and then travel and all the travel teams in NCSL, which is what we're talking about today, will have a... Uh, a denomination as travel next to them um, if they have another if they have two clubs so if the two programs sorry they have a rec program they'll they'll have a designation as rec and if they have a travel program they'll have a, a designation as travel and if you click into that team listings you'll see all the teams say this is Arlington's all the teams that they have signed up for um, for this for this uh, this season the current season and obviously past season as well and you can actually then click into team pages and kind of see what that looks like real quick and see the schedule. Um, you will use, I believe this is correct, Allison, the team login. Um, actually, the club, club reps are the only ones that have access to other Team managers also have access to, I think, the team login. Um, here, you can log into your team page specifically. Um, and then the club login is for, for the club reps, which is, I think, back one page. So club login. You won't use this login at the top of the page. You use the ones within the club pages specifically. And you correct me if I'm wrong, Allison, there. Um, so that's the access for your, your club pages and your team pages, which is important. We'll talk about some of the reasons why you'll need that information. Um, each team has a designated page, as, as I just said, um, and includes your schedules, rosters, and other important in, in, in uh, details. So I encourage you guys to, to go through that and make sure you have every, all your information listed properly. Um, and your schedule is up to date. And, and this is where you'll see any updates being posted. Some key resources going back to the presentation. Sorry, out of the page are the, and you can click into these links um, and I have them open here. The team administration season checklist and the team administration game day uh, cheat sheet. These are both linked on the homepage. Administration season checklist here on the left-hand column, you'll find lots of information and uh, quick links to things that are important. Um, there's a game day cheat sheet and the season cheat sheet, which you can click on. It's also in this presentation, which we will share with you afterwards. Um, this, these links will then be provided and I'll just show them quickly here. Um, the season, that's game day, sorry. Season checklist is here. So you can go to the homepage on the NCSL website and you can find that. And this is kind of an overview of everything that you might you, that you need to have ready to go for uh, to start the season, uh, preseason, which most of you have already uh, should have already completed all of these, um, and then some highlights that you want to um, outline some some of the key key uh, resources for uh, pregame in in season and, and game day as well, and you can take a quick look at this um, so that you can get an idea of some of the areas that you want to be that you want to have ready to go for the season. Both that and the game game day, which I'll sp spend a little bit more time on um, now that we're starting a game soon, is important for you to review before each game. Um, you still need to check in. So one of the things that you'll need to prepare for each game is that uh, the player cards and, and rosters are, are properly um, uh, are printed and brought to the game. Electronic Cards are allowed, but we, we, we advise you to bring the, the physical cards and your physical roster so you can you can check in as a part of the referee will check in the team, um, the teams using that information and using that 
using those documents. Um, and it's easier for the referee to have it if it's physical. Um, club passing. Here's something that we'll, I think we have a slide for this specifically, but we'll talk about here just briefly. Um, club passing is, is, a, is a tool that we provide to, to teams to allow them to extend their roster by allowing players who are within their program who might not be specifically listed on their team to play with their team when needed. It's, it's like a guest player for tournaments. Um, as long as that player is in the same club and, and, and is, is eligible, you know, age eligible, and has the same carding system, which is underneath USU soccer, um, they are allowed to be what we call club, club passed, which is a, basically a guest player for that game. Um, and it, you, there's unlimited amount, amount of them, amount of them, and you can be used for many multiple games. Um, the key here is not to overuse this and use this as a competitive advantage, meaning you bring in ringers just to win games, but it really is to supplement your roster in case of injury. Um, especially we did this when it was during COVID. Uh, you know, you're, you have players who are on vacation, and you need, or you have a performance reason. Maybe some players who wanted to switch teams or or move around with teams. Um, that's that's the purpose of the club pass. Now, obviously, there are situations where coaches might want to use it use it to, to to boost their roster, but that's not the primary the purpose of it. We want to allow that to be something that is more, more about supplemental than it is about enhancing. Um, keynote here that recreational players, which we we also run NCSL Rec, uh, but there are also other rec leagues. Recreational players are not allowed um, to play in the travel leagues in our NCSL uh, travel teams. So. Um, only travel players that are registered with with USU Soccer can play in those games. So please note that rec, rec players and this is are not allowed to play travel games. If they do make a switch over to travel, then they cannot come back to rec. So that is possible. A rec player could play travel if they decided to move up and become a travel player, but then they cannot uh, go back down. Um, some other just highlights that we'll want to we'll talk about here is is game re report scoring. And I'll show you where that is on the website. After each game, it's a responsibility, generally speaking, of the of the um, the winning team to report the score because usually they're motivated to want to report the score. Um, and you can click on that to show, see the show the the uh, the link to where where it is. But I'll show you quickly on the homepage. Oops, where that is. So again, on the left hand side, you'll see a lot of good links. One of them is the game reporting link, which will take you to this phone it in. Um, uh, page. And if I go back to the presentation, I believe that's one of the pages here. The fall, the pin for this fall is 3101. So with that, with that pin, plus the game number and the team names, you can enter and you can enter in the scores. And there's instructions on how to do that within this document. Other stuff that is listed here is, is just for reference purposes, explaining the game lengths for each of the age groups, size of the ball, and generally speaking, how many referees there are, um, and things like that. So take a moment to read through that. And if you have any questions, you can we can answer them after this presentation. Just wanted to show an example of what the roster looks like so that you guys can, can see, or generally speaking, what it looks like. Um, it might've changed slightly, but basically you have a list of the names, their IDs, their the date of birth, um, their state associated, I think their Jersey numbers. Um, you'll list any club pass players. It's kind of hard to see. Club pass players, I believe they're listed at the bottom and at the top you'll see the game numbers, the, the your team number, the date of the game, pictures for the players, um, things like that. So the, this is what you'll bring to the field with you when you print out your roster. You obviously scratch out the, the players who aren't playing or have to sit out a game. Um, and we'll talk about what that, what, how that, that happens when there's a red card. Um, and then any of the, the, the sideline passes for the coaches or the team managers will also have their information in here as well. Sorry, just so you can see a little bit better. I mentioned this earlier, that the link to the... Um, Game reporting link is on the sideline side uh, bar of the web main website, which then takes you to this page. And we saw that earlier. Go back to 100% here. Any questions so far? Take a pause here. Yes, uh, 
if you have a, a, a club pass player there, you say if he goes up to travel, he can't come back. Well, come back that season is what you're saying, right? Yes. Is that, is that how it works, Allison? I believe they're if they play travel at any point in time throughout the year, I think they they have to stay playing travel. That's my well, that season, not the year. Now the sorry, yeah, sorry, that season. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. That's right. Season. Yes, that season. Okay, not a problem. One thing I probably I will go back just real quick and just note here in terms of the game day, um, it's communication between the teams. So prior to the game, what we want the home team to do is contact the opposing team's manager at least 48 hours before uh, the match. I believe, yes. And, and this communication should include the field locations, what side of the field the team should set up on, um, any logistical information. Um, and we have a template of, of that. I believe that's in this oh. game. In this web, in this page here, you'll see pregame communication is an example of what you want to send out to your manager, uh, to the the opposing team's manager, excuse me, uh, prior to each game. So this is helpful information so that the team's coming to your, to have everything they need to know where to park, where wh where the fields are. If it's difficult to find the fields, where exactly where the fields are. Sometimes they're down a hill or around around a bit behind a building. Um, it's helpful for the teams to understand where to, where they need to go and get them. It's you know kind of a two way street where you get it, you get it when you're going away, and teams are you know courtesy for the teams coming in to visit you. You want to be as much you to provide as much information prior to the, the game so that you know um, so they know what they need to, to do when they get there. And it's helpful also in case with that communication something happens that they need to reschedule. You'll know by having this communication started a few days beforehand so that you don't show up to the game. And, you know, no team shows up because you never, you never contacted them prior to the game. So How a, far in advance is it typical for the team managers to reach out to the other team? At, at least 48 hours. I, I, we usually do, do Tuesday or Wednesday before the game, uh, that weekend's game, but within 48 hours would be reasonable. It's a good question. Like, yeah. but not a week and a half or two weeks in advance. No. That's what you're no. saying. No, just just a couple of days or, or three to four days beforehand, just to get the information out to them, to the other teams, opposing teams, so that they know uh, what to expect. And this is a good template you can use to kind of copy and paste it and, and send it to the teams. So the only for the home, the home team should do this for the, the teams visiting. I forgot to mention that part. So that's the, the the key takeaways from these resources, and it take a chance to to, to read through. We have a lot of links to um, different areas of, of the websites that, that, that with information. Um, and within the website itself, there's also a lot of this information in the frequently asked, frequently asked questions and forms. Um, you'll find a lot of how to find your club rep, uh, season checklist, how to update your team roster, how to find team schedules. We have a lot of guides here that allow you to uh, find information on, on anything that might you might need throughout the season. Yeah. Who do we report? Um, links that are outdated or things like that too. Uh, I, found it, I found several already. Uh, to myself or Allison. Okay. Appreciate that. We'll get those updated. Moving on to league administration role. This is the, the primarily the communication. We'll talk about two main things uh, that we, that um, Allison will, will deal, will handle throughout the season. Um, the first is, sorry, the, the guide to rainouts, um, throughout the season when, when, you know, there's inclement weather or for, for various reasons, fields are going to be closed. Um, this is the process that, that we want you to be aware of. Um, the club reps are responsible for, for reporting field conditions and closures to the NCSL as soon as possible. Um, and we want to, you also, also want to notify the teams and, and the contacts, uh, um, the team managers of the opposing team so that they know not to come to the fields for those days. Um, only the club can declare a field closed though. So a, a team cannot decide, well, the conditions aren't good. We're just not going to play. It has to be from, from the club deciding um, that the fields are, are unplayable or the referee in some cases would make that decision as well. The, the, the county might have the fields um, listed as open, but on the web, our website, we will have um, the most up-to-date information about the teams, um, oh, sorry, about the fields being open or closed. So you want to check the website for field closures. 
Um, it should it should say it on our website. If, as long as that information is reported to Allison um, in a timely fashion, we can get that information up. As, and, and an email will also be sent out um, to provide you with information, up to date information about that game. Um, Teams should contact their opponents only after they hear directly from their club reps, though. So it's, it's really important to understand that the, that the clubs are the ones that are that make make the decision. Um, and you can view the closing, like I said, like I said, the closing the report on the website. Um, all closed fields are posted on the home page. All canceled games will be automatically rescheduled and to the next available game date for both teams. So it's really important to get that information as soon as possible because it requires a obviously finding rescheduling the game for, for appropriate date and time with location and then also referees we have to we have to schedule referees that 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 can that can take some logistical work on our end so as soon as we realize that the fields are going to be closed for whatever reason we want to make sure that uh that information is shared uh with the with the club reps and then club club reps will contact uh the league administrator which is allison and then she'll update the information on the website there are instances where the game is either about to start or has started um, and both teams are at the field already. Say if the referee decides or there's inclement weather just, just as the game is starting and the referee decides that the game is not playable based on our, our, our inclement weather policy or conditions of the field that we can't control. Um, it, you know, it's, it's rare because of turf fields now that the games are going to be closed out because of rain, but um, there are situations where it's it's just unplayable and the referee makes a decision at the field um in those cases cases again you want to notify your club rep as soon as possible everything is going to be the communication is directly to them and then they they, they will uh provide the information to us to then have ha allow our our um pro rescheduling process to, to kick into place as, as quickly as possible so that we get those teams um and the referees scheduled for the next available date and allison i miss anything with that uh, no, I think that's all good. The, um, I would just add that once the game is rescheduled, you'll have an opportunity. If the new time and date don't work for your team, you'll have an opportunity to request a reschedule. So, about that. But, yeah. Next, we'll discuss um, the flex rescheduling. So, we understand that conflicts arise, which is why we offer the the, the flex rescheduling. However, these are the guidelines that uh, that we need you to follow. Um, first off, the deadline. So we're scheduling games for all of September. Um, the deadline is Friday, October 30th at by 5 p.m. And then the deadline for rescheduling any of the October and November, November games is September 20th, Friday, September 20th at 5 p.m. as well. So you must get your flex scheduling in that, that time period, by that time period. Um, the process begins with the home team checking availability with their club rep. Um, and once confirmed, a flex Flex reschedule request, excuse me, can be submitted via the NCSO website. And you can see that example of that here in this screenshot. Again, it's a little bit difficult to, to see. A video of this uh, and a written tutorial can be found in the NCSO uh, frequently asked questions section, um, which I showed you earlier how to get to. It's, a, it's important to remember that only one, uh, you can only submit one flex reschedule re request per game. So be, you know, plan ahead accordingly. Um, and the change is not official until it's reflected on, on your team's page and you receive a rescheduled confirmation email from the league. Any questions with that? And Allison, if I missed anything. The only thing I might add, Jamil, is that the rain dates for the league the uh last weekend of the season is november 9th and 10th this year this fall rain mm -hmm. dates are not allowed to be used and, and november 2nd are not allowed to be used for flex rescheduling dates we hold on to those dates um for rain dates so just keep that in mind please if you're requesting to reschedule a game any questions with that all right Moving on to the club rep role, as I said before, this 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 person for your club is is the the connect the vital crucial part of, of the of the communication between the uh, the club and the league, uh, and we want to make sure that you understand that they are the backbone of this league. Um, 
their job is to answer any of the questions you have and, and, and represent your voice to us to, in the league. Um, and you want to reach out to that him or her to, to, you know, if you have an issue with, with the, with the referees, if you have issues with scheduling a game, if you have issue, any of the issues you might have, you want to go directly to your club rep first, they usually will have all the answers because they, they're usually experienced um, with dealing with the league rules and understanding how to communicate with us. They will then reach out to us. Um, there's no need for the coaches to directly reach out. There are situations where coaches do, but it's better if the ref, the club rep is the one that handles all the communication between the coaches, the players, um, and the officials, and the volunteers, at, at, as well as NCSL. The other ones that are going to receive each week uh, all the information provided by NCSL, and then they will they will then dis disseminate that information to you, um, the coaches, the team managers, as needed throughout the club. They also coordinate the functions between their, their clubs and the NCSL. So registration, rescheduling, rules of discipline, all the paperwork, handling the, 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 the fees, um, things like that. They are, they're the ones that we rely on to, to as a liaison for the, for the clubs. And finally, as I mentioned before, they serve on the NCSL board of directors and they are, have a vote, voting rights um, to help decide on any major decision, any rule changes, any team admissions or a club admission, sorry, um, and, and things like that. So just wanted to, to say that again, I've, I've, I've said it a couple of times, it's, it's communicate with your club rep, get to know your club rep. They're the ones that will be the primary contact for your teams. And as I pointed out, the information for all of this is on the website. Um, underneath the travel section, you'll see just about everything you need in terms of schedules, field directions, opponent information, uh, rules and procedures, everything. Free, frequently asked questions. And if there's a couple, I think there's a couple of links that might be need to be fixed, but we'll, we'll fix them. Just briefly, as I mentioned before, as you see as a screenshot, uh, I already went through this, but on the left-hand side, um, you'll see a lot of helpful links and then the club pages are listed underneath the clubs and the travel section has all of the um, uh, information for the travel league. Any questions so far? Just pause for information presented so far. Okay, let's move on to the game day laws and procedures. Let's see here. Just a couple of highlights that we wanted to, to um, present today. Um, all of rules and procedures are listed on the website on, underneath the, the, the document rules and procedures, uh, which you can find here, travel rules and procedures which is a larger document, um, which you can read through. Um, just wanted to highlight the rostering guidelines for each of the age groups and some of the, the rules with, within those. So for U9 to U10 teams, the maximum roster size is 12 players. Um, heading is not allowed. Uh, that's a mandate from USU soccer um, or US soccer. Uh, and the division structure for these age group is focused, focused on development rather than co competition. Uh, teams are, are generally grouped by skill level and strict divisions. And then from within that, oftentimes geography plays a role. Um, and we do our best to balance those out um, as best we can. So the teams are, are competitive, but not it's not necessarily about, about the, the, the results. As you'll note, on the website, you will not see any of the game results listed, even though even though that information is collected by the referees because they have to submit their game reports. It's not something that we we want to public. We don't publicly uh, post those results for the reason of it's supposed to be for development purposes uh, at those age groups. Um, at that age, generally speaking, there's only one referee, so please bear with them. They're not. They're not. It's not a full referee crew. Um, and it's not supposed to be in an environment where it's professional, everything, perfect calls, perfect, be, you know, you don't have bar and things like that. It, I know that's obviously not youth soccer, but the idea here is that it's, it's, it's more of a developmental um, environment than it is for performance reasons. Um, as we, all the age groups have unlimited club passes. Um, and all the last thing I'll, I'll mention here is a link to the build out line is it's basically to allow the teams to have access to space to get out from the, their goal area and you can see this video here which is kind of in a demo, a de gives you a demonstration of what that is all of these are the, referee, the referees running the games will know these rules and the, the teams the coaches should be aware of of uh the, the game rules for u11 to u12 the maximum roster size is 16 
Um, heading is still not allowed until uh, for U11, sorry. Uh, the first, this is the first age group where teams are placed into number divisions based on their performance and skill level. So this is this, the spring season, sorry, is the first time that we will actually have division one, division two, II, division three, and we'll, we'll track scores. And then there will be promotion relegation based on results. Again, oftentimes we don't have a full crew at these younger age groups just because of the field size is not as big. And the emphasis still is, is more of a transitional period into 11 to 11. So the focus is still on more developmental than it is on performance. Although at some age groups, obviously at the top level, they're, they're trying to push that a little bit more, but we understand it's, it's not going to be a full crew all the time. So expectations should be, there's going to be missed calls and uh, not to um, get too, too, too much on the referees for, for that reason. Obviously 13 and up rosters max is 18 and basically the same what you're used to if you're used to coaching the older teams or 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 have teams that are in the older age groups 11 v 11 full side game what you see at the professional level oftentimes full 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 referee crew um most of the games or should be most of the games and general rules apply mentioned this already but just wanted to re-highlight re it here unlimited club passes for, for all the teams for all the age groups just to, this was a change in covid but as long as they're age eligible and they are in the same club, um, oftentimes teams will allow to share players between teams if that's needed. And we allow players to play in more than one NCSL per game, but teams only have one game. I mentioned this earlier, the team check-in process, use your state approved rosters. So you'll, you will have that printed out and your player cards. And then afterwards, the referee will submit their game reports and the team administrators should do the same. And we have a, we have a link in there, our frequently asked questions to, to how to report a game score. I mentioned, I, we showed this earlier. This is an example of a, a Virginia Youth Soccer Association uh, official roster. Can I ask a quick question? So yes. when you Go so ahead. somebody's going to be a guest player, like the D team needs somebody really quickly and it's on the same day. They can't, uh, somebody on the C team, let's say can't play on that team. What's what's so if somebody on the D team wants to play with the C team. Yeah. So let's say they need an extra player and somebody on another team is available, but they've already played their game for the day. They, they can play in more than one game. The player can play in more than one game. The teams can't, aren't going to play in more than one game. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Thank you. So yes, they could play if they wanted to back-to-back -back games um allow, we allow that the league allows for players to play in more than one ncsl per game per day sorry it's a good question the team sportsmanship liaison the tsl each team must have a tsl for every match um they are the ones that help manage especially when there's only one referee uh, the behavior of the teams and the responsible, the team managers in general and the coaches are also responsible, but we also want to designate a person um, for each match to, to provide what we'd say the cooler head on the sideline. This is something that emphasis for the league, which we'll go into a second about rules, of the referees, rules and discipline. Um, we want to make sure that the environment is safe for the players, safe for the referees, um, and that everyone is keeping a level head when watching youth soccer. Obviously, it's just a game and at that end of the day. So we want to implement, we have implemented for our teams, a team TSL for every match. Um, the other point of contact should the referee feel the need to um, deal with any inappropriate behavior. Uh, any questions at this point? Yeah, hey, I had a, a question. Um, Yep, I, I'm I'm big on checklists, and I apologize. So, if 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 I'm the team manager and and we have a game coming up, you know, in, in two weeks, is it is it safe to say that I should go to the NCSL FAQ and form site and just kind of run down the list of everything I should have done? Like if if I have a home team email, um, you mentioned that, and then be prepared to report a game, but that's not going to be till after the game. Yep. 
to things like that. I'm just I'm just trying to look. I'm tr I'm trying to come up with like a like these are the four things I have to do for every game. Yeah. So there's there's a checklist here that probably does it. Free. I would go through the frequently asked questions, and there's some in tutorials there as well. Say for example, you don't know how to print the roster, so and how or, or what it requires for you to print the, the player cards. Once you do that once, you'll know how to do it again. But that's what you got. You have to have the player cards ready and the, the roster ready every game. And there might be changes to your roster each game. So that's also something you'll need to manage um, as well. And then you can re you can reference. And then once you have that process, the communication prior, if you're on the home team prior to that, um, to the other team to let them know, you can use that letter that we provided. Um, and once you have that information, once you have the team roster, the the uh, those cards, the check-in process is, is relatively straightforward okay. once you get to the field. Um, you, you, you'd hand over the game report or the, sorry, the, the roster to the, um, to the referee and they'll go through the process of checking in. The, the okay. Board. So in, uh, you'll help them out with that. So pretty much the, the pregame should be, should, well, okay. Pregame game day and then post game. Those are the three big ones that I need to, I need to focus on every yep. week. Okay. Thank you. I think once you run through it one time, um, or a couple times, you'll get the idea. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Thank you. Allison, did I miss anything there? No, sorry. I, yeah, I think that you, that's good. Okay. All good. Uh, I think we have a Caroline Schoenecker. I think I, I just popped up. Sorry, away. yeah. So we've got a couple questions going on in the chat about rosters. So I just I thought I would just kind of clarify. Okay. Um, so rosters that are in GOT Sport versus rosters that are in an NCSL because we see that our rosters are clear in God sport but not in NCSL yet do we need to add them manually can we print the God sport rosters and just add guest players at the bottom does it depend on what age level so if you could just kind of clarify what are the actions that need to be taken by managers for the rosters on our team pages so I think Allison, the, the rosters are that are got spot got sports rosters are not what we use. I, I believe, um, I believe we use the ones printed from the web, from our website, right, Allison? So the um, the easiest, like you have to give a list of players, a team roster to the referee when you're there on game day. You can print it from Got Soccer or Got Sport or wherever the the state website is. Yes, um, I don't recommend printing it from the NCSL website because that's a, a chunkier kind of harder thing to do but you do yeah. have to um so so take a roster that you can print out i mean in a pinch you can get a piece of paper and write down the players names and okay. give it to the referee you just have to have the player cards the official travel yes. registered player cards so but in a pinch like you if you forgot a roster you can just get a piece of paper and write it all down including okay. guest pass or club pass players and give it to the referee so it's easiest to print it from the state website whether that's got soccer or you know whatever it is um, that the, the, the whatever your state association uses. Um, the NCSL website, we require that every team page for U12 and older teams, you have to put the players on your team page with their jersey numbers. And that's so that when the referee records the game report, he or she can uh, put in cards shown and that kind of thing. It's not required for U9 to U11. You can do it if you want to, but you don't have to. But it is required and there is a fine associated if you don't do it. By the first game of the season, whether that's September 7 or September 8 or September 14th or whenever your first game is for U12 to U19 players. Uh, most okay. of the players, most of the players are probably already in the system. So it sounds like it's a big job to put in all these players, but there is a um, there's a search button. And if you start typing in the kid's name, it's likely going to already show up unless it's a brand new player. Um, wow. Unless you so, have yeah. a team of entirely new travel players like mine. Right. Which you could, which you could. I mean, it's not often by U12 that you have entirely new, but it, but it's possible. You're right. But um, most of the teams are going to have returning players that are already in the database. And it's it's not a, it's not, I mean, it'll take you, hopefully will take you 15 minutes or less to put yeah. in your entire we're, team. We're about half and half. I'm literally doing it like while I yeah. just searched like, yeah, I just mm -hmm. searched returning players. And I saw yep. like our whole roster from last yep. year selected yep. who was returning and now I'm going to add the new girls. So I just have to do that manually. Yep. Yep. And it shouldn't, okay. it really Got shouldn't it. take very long. Yeah. And it's just, okay. we just Thank you for that name. clarification. 
we just need their name and their jersey number on the website and that's it but then on game day you need a roster either printed from the state website which i think is probably the easiest way to get your roster yeah. or uh, you can just write everybody's name down on a piece of paper but it's just easier to print it out my suggestion would be just, just print confirming. print 10 copies and and you keep them in your notebook and then you're done for the season <laughs> the, the date of birth is not required on so on the roster for the referee no because it's on the player card so the roster for the referee you just need a list of players who are participating that day because their birth date is on their player card when you show and you have to have their official player cards at the field but we still have to have our date of birth in the on the website on the ncsl team list that's not required no just the names and jersey numbers are required not the birthday okay. Yeah, it, just I don't the, think it would let me save without it, but okay. And that may be, and that, but that's not something that we ever check. It's just the names and the jersey numbers that have to be on the team page. Does that all make sense, or did I just confuse everybody? <laughs> no, I got it. Okay. And club pass players will be listed at the bottom. You can either, I think, write them in or, or add them in. In right. Stadium. So in the in the example that is showing shows like game number and NCSL team number. Do we need to have that information per game as well? I don't believe it's required for the the roster check in process. Allison, okay, right? That's, that's what we've always put on the top so that refs know which game it is to report. Yeah, it helps them with the game reports, but it, yeah, but it's not, I don't think it's, I, I would put it on there so, so they can, they, it, everyone has that information so you can report the game afterwards pretty easily. The game so, so most of the referees take these rosters with them when they're done and they yeah. have, all referees are required to enter a referee report with us after, after the game. And so if they have your roster with the game number, it prevents confusion. My suggestion is just to get in the habit. I mean, game numbers are kind of our way of communicating. Yes. So my suggestion would be just to write the game number on it, write the date if you want, but um, you know, as much identifying information as you can. So when the referee is done with the season and has refereed 30 games, then if there's ever an issue with the one that your team played, it's easier to go back and find that information. Where do we get the player cards at? Those are on Got Sport or whatever your state associations, right? Wherever you register your players for your state association, that's where they will get their player cards. But so we anyways. shouldn't we shouldn't have to worry about player cards because they're auto populated into the roster. We just go to the team page and print out the roster. Is that right? You'll have you have to print the player cards and laminate them and bring them to the fields as well. I mean, you can use the electronic version as well, but you you should print the player cards and laminate them to protect them um, and present that as so the referee has them physically there to look at the players. And they're not going to just look at the roster itself. You need player cards as well. That's what the information has their their ID on it, their date of birth, and and everything that will allow you to identify the players. You probably should put an example of that up on the on the website. And make sure you have the, if you have club pass players, have their player cards also. So when I send them to my teams, I send them, like if I have two 2012 boys teams, I send them both sets of player cards. That way they, the coaches have access to whoever they need. So we need a team login to Gotsport as well to pull down all of our players and print their cards. Sorry. Say that one more time. Sorry. So we need a, a team login. We need a, I need a login for my team to Got Sport to access my roster and pull and print off individual player cards for everybody on the roster. It's not just that's a that's another website I need to go to to. to yes, get your club, your club rep should be able to give you that information. Okay. Uh, as well, so when you register your players to even be to be active players in your club that is a part you have to be registered with the state association just to be a member of that club anyway so they will have information to then print out uh the player cards for your for your players um and they don't have to be laminated i said laminated but a, a, a card sleeve is fine it doesn't have to be physically laminated but it i most of the club clubs that when i remember had in, in some kind of plastic sleeve uh so they're protected from rain and 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 whatnot so and from damage 
but for for the state association, the, the the players are registered for the state association, and then your club, and that part of that process, verifying them as their you know their birth the birth date and who they are, um, is what the, the state association say. For example, VYSA uses to identify the players. They should issue you um, a player card from that. And you, you should have a lam not a laminated, but a, a, a card that you can print out, and then that will be what you bring to the fields. So get with your club rep to then go to the say association website, say association websites, then print off the, the player cards. Yep. As somebody has, has noted, your club administrator should, can send you the player cards and the roster so you can have them on file and print to use at any point in time. And generally speaking, once you have all the players listed, you just need to copy that 10 times and put the game number for each of the games. Um, and you could update that paper, like see how this has crossed off names. That's an easy way to kind of just, you know, you probably print 20 of them so you have extra. And then you can just cross names off and add names as you needed uh, for each of the games. So once you have it printed once, once the manager, your club, sorry, your club rep gives you that, uh, gives you the player cards and gives you um, the roster, you can you can use, manipulate it and use it multiple times uh, for that for that season. These are all good questions. Some of the questions are being asked in the chat. I don't know if I need to, if you guys are reading them or if I should repeat them. So um, for example, should name and Jersey be added under the team roster section? And yes, uh, you should enter the, the players' names and jerseys numbers on the NCSL website, as Allison pointed out. But the team roster itself will come from the state association, which will have the birth dates. They're the, they're the reg registration for the players and they keep track of who's who and verify via their the verification process, the player's age. So we don't we don't manage that the VOSA, the state associations manage that. And the referees are just using the cards to check. Any further questions, any, any additional questions? You might. So, so let me ask you, so for the games that are listed, should we wait to put those in in case there's changes? Put, put like your rosters, your roster in? Is that what you're asking? Uh, yeah, so the, the, the games are listed. So yes. should, okay, should we wait to put those in? Your roster is flexible. It 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 can change throughout the season. So you don't it, the players you have within your within the web list within the website, you can you can modify when as needed. But you can start adding in players. It doesn't change per game. Like it's not going to stop you from adding players later on after games are started. You want you want to get your your roster in now, as many of the players you have listed um, in the NCSO website with their jersey numbers, um, and you can add as many as needed for the up to the, the maximum for that roster. And then as you print them for the games, you'll get that from the state association. You can cross people out, players out as needed. Okay. So I guess, I guess let me reword this. So does demo, I need to put the, the actual games in Demosphere or is it automatically pushed from the website for the games? Do the team managers have to update the calendar and Demosphere? No, the games are loaded, pre, are loaded by us. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Thanks. Is that what you're, is that what, I hope yep. I'm at. Answer yep, that yeah. that's perfect. Yeah, the, the your team's page should have a schedule. I did. I I clicked away from say Arlington's 2016 boys Ajax. This is their schedule, and it will be updated as needed. The game numbers here, right? This is the division. Their game number, who they're playing, and where they're playing. The location has links to the fields, um, and you can see everything that you uh, about where the standings are. This is not going to post any standings here because we have. Uh, this is U9, but um, your information's here. The yeah, team. but is that stuff entered into Demosphere automatically? Automatically, right? yes. It's it's okay. done by our fearless leader, Allison. All right, perfect. <laughs> what is Demosphere? This is the, the tool behind, uh, the, the the software behind the, the system that we're using. It's just the name of the, it's just the name of the product, but it's the website that we're using. So when you go to division schedules and, and results, you'll see a list of the teams, the divisions, and that's just the software behind it. So um, if my son plays for Vienna and it's on play metrics, so this just goes straight into play metrics or it, it I have won't to do that. It won't transfer to play metrics. You can, you can, um, 
I think, but I'm pretty sure you can export the schedule, but you can manually, you have, it's like we have team snap, for example, um, instead, instead of play metrics, this information does not automatically populate over there. Club reps or managers will enter the inf information. Your club rep should put it in there automatic for you. So this is okay. the website is handled by us. Our website handles the information here, but you then have to modify or, or get that information into whatever system you're using. Okay, thank you. So there is okay. no link between if your team uses play metrics and, and then I use God Sports, none of these are linked. So God Sports and your website here are not in any way linked. So uh, what I find on your website, I have yes. to transfer on my own. Okay. Yes. This is the source of truth for us. And any updates here, rescheduling will be posted here. And then any changes will need to be reflected in whatever club software you're using to manage your internal communications. All right, so, I'm gonna ask another question. Third time's a charm. Now I understand that we're not all using the same thing. When I say Demosphere, I'm meaning the app. So since I have Demosphere app, I'm gonna have to enter those games into the app so my team can know it, or is this website gonna update my app? That, I, Allison, do you know how that works if it's a club's also using Demosphere? So my understanding is that if your club is using Demosphere, it's all linked, but I don't know the answer with that. I think, uh, yeah, whoever awesome. answered in the chat, uh, check with your club rep. I, I don't, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to give you an answer and be incorrect. So I would check with your club rep. I, my understanding is that they're all supposed to be linked to their app. That's what Demosphere tells us. And all right, hopefully it works. Over there, so I'm hopeful. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I'll keep my fingers crossed. I hope so too. <laughs> be easier. <laughs> and is there a, a way you, you said something about exporting the schedule in order to be able to, for example, import it into play metrics. I, I manually entered all of it. Um, I, if I can avoid doing that in the spring, I'd love to. Can you show me how to export? Allison, is there an export feature? That I, I assume there was, but I, I I was hopeful there was. Is there an export I, feature? I think there is off the team page. Uh, and I was just looking it up to make sure. If there's not, your club. Oh, yeah. Rep, so there's, there's export schedule. So yeah. this line right here, export schedule games to preferred calendar. And then you can, yeah. download, you can download the ICS. I'm sorry, where... I, I didn't see your cursor at the time. Sorry. I'm on, like, say, this team's page. I went yeah. to calendar, which is not very intuitive, but click on the word calendar, Ooh. and it pops up with a download and sync option. So that link, I'm learning something new every day. Uh, uh, link, no, that's a, that looks like just an iCal link. And that's so, going to be the, that's going to be the, like, imported into a, into a, right like, right show a calendar app. It's not going to, it's not going to import it into a, like a data file or a CSV. Yeah. I might be able to put into another thing. Maybe if it wants to in Google, then you can export it from there would be my, my guess, but I haven't tried that. I, I have to get back to you okay. on that. I'll mess around with it. But that at least it gets you in your, your personal calendar if you need it. So that's one way of getting it out. So any of the apps that use this could, the, the, the iCal. Is one way of trying it. But we'll look into that. All very good questions. We'll, fin we'll finish up here with um, rules and discipline, just so everyone understands um, some of the key key uh, takeaways for how we want to manage. It's still zoomed in. Uh, how we want you guys to to help us manage the expectations for each of these games and understand what that we need the referees. And so as much as we possibly can, setting expectations with your teams to sideline behavior, coaches behavior with the referees and understand the process here when things, when do, when things are uh, escalate, how we handle them internally. So the current state of referee pool, 50% of the referee pool is replaced every year. And oftentimes it's because of, of referee abuse. Um, Parents, players, coaches um, are the number one reason why why coach, uh, referees are not interested in continuing um, providing that service. And so we need referees, and we, it's been very important that everyone understands and does their does their best within internally within the clubs and obviously within your teams to help us foster an environment where referees want to continue. Um, we have an R and D committee that reviews every match report. Um, complaints and determines appropriate actions. Um, we have a process to deal, deal with, with 
protests, which uh, requires a, a $200 fee. But the idea here is not, is not to get to this point, but we do have a process to manage when there are situations that escalate um, and determine the result of any abandoned games, terminated matches, and is any uh, maintain a database. We also maintain a database of disciplinary um, uh, points, which I'll explain here in the next in the next couple of uh, slides. Um, we do fi fine teams and suspend players, coaches, and entire teams if if behavior is deemed inappropriate. Um, and you can read about most of the rules and disciplines, or all the, the entire complete rules and disciplines manual in our in a um, in our uh, rules and disciplines uh, spreadsheet or not spreadsheet, a document. Here's a list of of a uh, fake example of a team um, that has a list of players. You can click on the link to players receiving cards, and you can see that their player name is hidden here from from you. Um, whether or not they got a yellow card or a red a red card, um, and then the points associated with that, which I, I'll show you here in a second. It's your job and responsibility responsibility to track the points and make sure that they are even though if the website's not up to date yet because we haven't gotten the reports from the referees it's your is your job as team manager and um uh club rep to to let to track the points that are accumulated throughout the season when players receive yellow cards and red cards so that they sit out the appropriate games and don't play as ineligible players which would would cause you to forfeit a game when that we find that out that half happened so we rely on you on the managers and the club reps to uh, keep track of any cards given, even if you agree with it or not, if it's issued, um, you have to make sure that you understand that the point system and how it, 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 um, affects your player's eligibility. Obviously a red card is an automatic sit out and there is, oops, Allison got jumped out, uh, moved out. And we have to maintain that. We have to make sure that they don't play that next game at the very least. Um, sometimes in situations, if it's an egregious amount, they might have to sit out more than one game, especially if they have, have accumulated a number of cards. Um, or a situation where it's a coach um, and we deem it necessary to, have to, to issue an additional um, um, penalty or suspension. So make sure you understand where to um, track these points or how to track these points. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Uh, when a player receives a car, a yellow card, it's a caution in a game. They have, they, they get five points. A red, red card is, a, is a 10 points. Uh, two yellow cards equals a red card, so it's also 10 points. And then the max you could get in a, in a game would be 15 points. Um, coach, coaches and team officials, first card in a match earns five additional penalty points. First yellow equals 10. First red equals 15. And max earned by a coach in a, in a, in a game is, is 20. If you get... Sorry. If you suspended for a game, obviously a red card's made one match sit. If you accumulate 20 points, which we explained before, how to how to track that or how to count those, that's also a match sit out. So basically, if you get a lot of yellow cards, four, four yellow cards, you have to sit out a game in separate games. So if you got a yellow card in four consecutive games, you'd have to sit out the fifth game. And every 10 points after you've you've accumulated more than 20 is a match sit out. Again, it's on it's on the club to to track this. We're, we are looking at the reports, but it it can take some time off oftentimes to to verify. So we require you to to, to follow an honor system. If a player receives cards and they've gotten twenty points, but the, the website hasn't been updated yet, you know they have twenty points. Make sure that they sit out the next game. And the way you want to designate that is to let the referee know on the roster that you have a sit out. I have a, another question about that. So our yeah. coach actually got kicked out of our game halfway through last year. Mm -hmm. And so the team mom said that she was the only one that could, could go out because I don't know if she's certified or something. Is that true? I mean, if the coach get kicked out, who can step in to help coach the game? Is generally there a rule speaking, for that? There isn't a specific, generally speaking, one of the team officials, like team manager, just one that would, or an assistant coach. Mm -hmm. um, I think, but I believe we allow parents as well, but in a okay. situation to finish the game. Um, generally, there there's an, there isn't a specific rule that says it has to be a, a, one of, a specific person that has to do it. It could be any of the team officials or parents to finish the game. Okay, thanks. Doesn't it have to be somebody who's safe sport trained? That would also be true. So usually the team manager is the one that steps in. Hopefully they are the ones that are there. The TSL, if they are, they should be uh, 
safe sport certified um or assistant coaches so yeah it would have to be somebody who's who's a, an official of the team okay so generally speaking that the team manager is the one that would step up to finish out the game okay allison, you. are you back allison Hi. Right. Yes. I'm sorry. My screen froze, and and I so I, I missed some chats. People were talking in the chat, and I just missed it because my screen froze. So, we were going so through please. some of these. I, I didn't. I had one one question here. I just want to verify in terms of if there's a if the coach gets kicked out of a game, um, who's responsible for I guess finishing the game? Would I've mentioned the team manager? Uh, can a parent finish the game? Yes. Yeah. So. Um, as long as you are, if you're not already on the team bench side, because we have the um, the passes, you're allowed to have people with a pass that aren't already carded. So people who already have a card, whether it's usually the coach, the assistant coach, often the manager is already carded, um, can be on the team bench side. If you don't have a card, you're allowed to have um, one of the uh, cards from the, uh, the NCSL website. We have them on there and, and that person can step in. So it can be anybody, but you just have to have the official card to be over there, either through the state or through the NCSL website. Um, somebody just asked, can the team manager also be the TSL? Yes, that's absolutely fine. The purpose of the TSL is to kind of manage parent behavior. <laughs> and I know, I know this is a shock, but yeah, so sometimes parents get passionate and excited about the game. And um, we used to joke that TSLs should just have a bag of lollipops so that you can just put them in parents' mouths as needed. Mm -hmm. But if the team manager wants that job, then yeah, absolutely. That's fine. Um, or you can have somebody else often, if you pick somebody who's the, let's put it this way, if you have somebody who's the most passionate about the game, have them be the TSL. And then you find that the behavior is kind of a little better managed on the parent side. So hope that answers the question. As I said, this is an honor system, so the teams must have a system, have a system to record cards earned in each match and track it, track the points. It's your, it's your responsibility to make sure that they are um, sitting out the games that they're supposed to sit out. Um, if for some reason you're not sure what happened, the TSL and or managers should approach the referee after the game to, to verify so that they understand who got red cards and who got yellow cards in the games. Sometimes it's a little confusing watching the game, what happened, um, and then check the website for the cards and the, the points that were issued during that game. If you find a discrepancy, please let your club rep know. Um, or if you have a, rep, a referee issue at all, contact your club rep. The other ones that will submit a report to the R&D um, to allow us to investigate the situation. It's not the responsibility of the parents to confront the referee or this is where the behavior of the ref, let the ref officials of the team handle any communication with the referee um, and let them handle any situations that are going on and they will be the ones that report back to us feedback on the situation if there's an issue with the referee uh, for whatever reason there's a sit out form that you must fill out um, and sign by the opposition whenever there's a situation whenever a player does sit out during a game um, and you want to advise a referee before the game this is important so that you get credit for it um, advise the referee that a player who is on your roster is sitting out so they can report it in the online system. And then you want to email that form to NCSL and keep a copy for yourself. This is, there's a form on the website. Um, you'll see it on the left-hand side. It's similar to this form here on the left. I believe that's, that's an accurate representation of who's sitting out for that game. Is there a question? This, oh, I forgot to mention this. This will be posted on the website by tomorrow, as well as this presentation uh, will be available for review. The, the presentation here, the, the PDF, or sorry, the, the slideshow. Uh, just to go back to this real quick, uh, players must not dress or, or in any fashion um, for the game in terms of like uh, as, a, as a player. So they, they have to be in street clothes um, and they can be on the, they can be on the spectator sideline uh, but they cannot be appear on the the the, the team sideline. Coaches who are sitting out a game must can appear prior to the game, so thirty minutes before, um, and, and thirty minutes after. But they cannot be there during the game. So players are allowed to be there on the game on the sideline with the parents, but the coaches or team officials, so if a, a team parent or team manager or coach 
gets a red card or has to sit out for whatever reason, um, they must remain 100 yards from the field during the game. 30 minutes prior, they're allowed to be there, and 30 minutes after, they're allowed to be there. But during the game itself, they can have no contact with the team or bench. Obviously, this is to prevent coaches who are around a red card from coaching on the sideline, on the opposite sideline. Pretty straightforward. And as I said, this is the form that you want to fill out uh, for when a player or or anybody any person sits out a game, so you get credit for that. And as I said earlier, it's not the responsibility of the parents to confront the referee. Um, we get all the information from the referees after the fact. Let your team managers manage the situation. Do your best. They will do their best. The TSL as well do their best to diffuse this to conflicts. Um, it's just a game. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure that these referees are understand that these referees are here to help, um, manage the game and, and we can't do it without them. So, uh, we want to make sure they have a good experience and you might have a referee that you don't disagree with or that, that you feel like is not doing their, their job, but let us, we have a process to review and, and, and make sure referees are up to a certain standard and let the league and the clubs manage, um, the situations with the referees. I have a question. Yes. Um, it's about the sideline passes. Yep. Do they need to be printed out on green paper? Or... No. Okay, so it doesn't matter what color they are. No. Right now, so they don't have to be on green, green paper. Well, they I, don't, they, no. They, okay. Yeah, it's just green on the... on the. I just opened it up and looked at it. Yeah. It's green, so just... I think there, there was a reason why that back in the day. I, well, yeah, we used to hand them out in person when these meetings were in person. But yes. I, since you print them at home, you can have whatever paper you want. Yes. Okay. Good question. I have a question. Yep. Um, uh, regarding the referee staff. So we, as the team managers, we reported to our NCSL rep, right? Yes. yes. That's the process. Got it. Yep. And they can then then contact us about whatever issues that you're having in the game with the rep specific referee, if there's something that happened and we can look into it. Thank you. As I mentioned before, and this is kind of to wrap it up before we get to any more questions, um, a lot of resources, but your hub for just about all your information is the website and or your club rep. Um, and if there's anything we missed tonight or or any questions that we didn't cover, uh, you can obviously reach out to your club rep or 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 look through the website for for that information and contact either those sources or look through either of those sources to, to find the information that you need. So on the left hand side, you'll see a lot of a lot of the, the helpful links uh, along with this presentation. Any questions? Oh, and coming up here in next Thursday, not this Thursday, but next Thursday is a follow up meeting to this meeting, which allows if there's any additional questions that we didn't answer tonight, come to that session and we'll we'll answer more questions. Um, give you a chance to review this presentation, give you a chance to review the rules, uh, give you a chance to review your schedules, everything, anything you might have a question about. This is kind of a first pass at it. Um, we'll have a Q&A where we just open up for just purely discussion um, next Thursday, I believe, is when it is at seven o'clock. And here the link is, is has been sent out to your club reps as well as here. It's linked here. So once we post this, you'll have access to it or the club rep can send you that, that as well. Any, and the questions to finish up today? There's a question. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say there's a question in the chat about light jerseys and dark jerseys for home and away. I don't think there's a standard set by the league we, we don't yeah. we don't we don't manage that that's up to the clubs and that's where the communication honestly happens prior to the game let the teams know what jersey color you'll be wearing because the home team is responsible for changing so if the, they show up and you had told them dark and they happen to just not follow that and wear light then it's on you to have both uniforms ready to go so you can switch if you need to because the home team that, that one has to switch their jerseys that happens, it just needs communication or the other team maybe didn't want to wear that color, whatever that, whatever the situation is. Um, 
be prepared to change. I, you always want to bring both um, with that. Teach game. Um, the one, website lists every team's manager POC. It does their emails if they've entered it in, I believe. At the very least, there should be an email, not necessarily phone number, generally speaking, the email at the very least for the team managers. So I heard somebody. Yeah, I was just wondering if a player's not showing up in the, um, like how you add them to the roster on the team website mm -hmm. or in CLS, does that mean that they're not registered? You know how you search for them, you put their name in it, they aren't showing up at all. Um, does that mean that they have to be registered with the NCL, NCSL? So if they're not showing, are you talking about putting it on your team page? Putting yeah, in jersey you, number? you enter those yourself. Right. So if they're okay. not showing right. up, it just means they're new to NCSL. They're just new to NCSL. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, our system is not directly linked to the USA or any of the state associations. There's three, Maryland, Virginia, um, and West Virginia. But that information you enter in manually, once it's in our system, that player is now forever in our system. You can look them up again. That's when you can add them. So every year after the first time you've added a player, even if they don't are a player that play, I believe in another team even, you can find those players. Sorry, and where do you look up player information on the website? So that's when you log into your, I believe your team page, right, Allison? I don't have access to that, but. Yeah, it's it's on the team page. You have to log into your team page, which I showed. Let's see if I can get in there. Team login here. So let's say this is your team. You log in to your team login here. And then you'll have access to your roster. Okay. Once you sign in, there's a whole set of little buttons across the top of where that team name is, like uh, in between where it says Arlington 2016 and then where their blue banner with recreation travel, all that, there will be a whole set of buttons where you can do things like edit the contact information for the team manager and the coach. You can change the team colors if your club's uniforms have changed. You can request to reschedule a game. You can um, uh, update your roster. There's a whole set of, um, of options once you're signed into your team page. And if you don't have your sign-in information for your team page, that's when you contact your club rep because they set that up for you. Yeah, so there's some of the... Here's an, here's an example of what it looks example. like when you log in. Yeah. You should have to modify most things, but if you needed to update the coach's email, phone number, and, and, and edit your roster contact information, all that's all here. That's, this was talking about the cards, but that's the team login basically for this team. We've, we've masked it here, but. All good questions. So like I said, in a week and a few days from now, excuse me, uh, on August 22nd, once you have a chance to go through this all again and, and review everything, get yourself ready for the season. If you have any additional questions, show up to this session and we'll we'll do our best to answer them. Um, this presentation, along with the recording, will also be linked to the website for anybody who missed it. I believe we had an issue with too many, too many people today um, joining in. We'll have to fix that for next time. But um, we'll have another session similar to this, but then I won't go through the entire deck, but we'll have just questions and answers and maybe walk through a few things if we if we need to. I have uh, one more question. Yep. Sorry, you're about no to end it. Um, is this all of this information for the um, team admin checklist? Does this also apply to tournament registrations, or is this a completely separate thing? Completely separate. We don't um, run any in specific tournaments ourselves. So the league NCSL does not have any. So any league, any events that you do outside of which you can say, for example, Labor Day event coming up you'll have a different separate process for managing rosters and, uh, you know, player cards. They have their own rules. So you have to contact the tournament directors for those, those events. Okay. Awesome. The, the link for this will be, this is last year's link, but it'll be, it'll be posted right here. So this is spring team, new team administration meeting recording. Um, I'll update this after this, after I get it uploaded to YouTube um, and you'll click right here to go see the recording and the slides also will be posted here. So this is from the, every half season, every season, basically, we have this meeting for to go through, remind everybody how, how the process works.
these two links right here. And again, frequently asked questions and forms, and we'll fix any links that are links that are broken. But a lot of that sit out card that's here. You can print that off and bring it to the game. TSL badge. Have your parents read through the code of conduct, <laughs> um, and then any other other helpful links here. You won't need somebody. These are called rep, rep onlys, but this should help pull as well. All righty, we'll end it there. Um, appreciate everyone taking the time to to meet and uh, and for your attention. Um, I hope the session provided you with the necessary tools and knowledge to manage your teams effectively. Um, if you have any further questions, please don't res hesitate to reach out to your club rep and join us for our next Q and A. Thank Thanks you, everybody. Sir. Have a good evening. Thanks, Thanks everybody. So much. Good night. Take care.